I'm normal. We're talking about the normal distribution. The normal distribution is given to you by this. That's the formula for the normal distribution. And you can get these t-shirts in the link below. Anyways, standard normal distribution. That means it's centered about zero and the standard deviation is one. That's fun. Let's talk about calculating normal probabilities using the table. So let's go to our appendix. The book we're using has two tables in the back. They're both cumulative normals and they're both left tail normals. So if we're going to go through and we're going to calculate a few of these probabilities, we need to know whether or not we're on the right side or the left side of the mean, of the average. But we're dealing with the stand standard normal curve. So our mean is zero and our standard deviation is one. Fun. So if we're looking for the probability that a value is less than minus 1.65, if you will, then we're going to find the table for the left side distribution because our z-values were negative. And then we're going to go down to minus 1.6 and over to 0 0.05 and we look up that probability and it's going to be 0 0.0495. Well, that's good times. What if we're looking for a probability that is less than 2.23, 2, 2, all right. So what do we do? We're on the right side because our z values are positive and we're looking for the probabilities that it's gonna be less than 2.23 standard deviations away from the mean. So we go down to 2.3 and we go over to 2.23. So we go down to 2.2 and we go over to 0.3 and we see the probability that our values are going to be less than that are 0 0.9871. That's fun. But what if we wanted to know what the probability in standard deviations if the value was greater than 2.23? Well, here we see that the probability under the normal curve has to add up to be 1. So, since we're using left side intervals, we need to find the area to the right, but we know the area to the left and the total area is less than 1, so we're going to use, or is equal to 1, so we're going to use subtraction, and then that's why when we're looking for the probability that a value is going to be greater than 2.23, we go, we look up 2.23, and we do 1 minus that value because the area underneath the entire normal curve is 1. The area to the left was 0 0.9871. So 1 minus 0 0.9871 is going to give us the area to the right of that value, which is 0 0.0139. I kind of just did that in my head. If I'm wrong, comment in the comments below. So now that we're looking for the probability in between two values, I'm taking a look at these two values. I value this normal curve, where I see one of them's on the left side, that's right here. That's a minus 1.65, and maybe it's a little bit further that way, because we know we're centered around zero, and there's three standard deviations to either side. Of course, it keeps going, but that's unlikely. And then I'm looking at this one further out. 2.23, oh, and I'm looking for the area in between them. Yeah, yeah, that's what that says, the probability that z is in between those two z values, so I need to find that guy. And you're like, how if I have two left side intervals? Well, here we go. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna subtract that. Whoa. I'm gonna take this area I'm going to subtract off this area and I'll be left with this area. And then that's how I'm going to calculate the value in between two. This is going to be the probability that Z is smaller than 2.23 minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to, because it has no measure of minus 1.65.
And we have both of those values, so this is point nine eight seven one minus point zero four nine five. And the difference is point nine three seven six. I'm normal.